What's going on with my reptile junkies? Guys, finally getting off my butt and making a video. Plus, several of you guys have reached out and asked me how the Kribo babies are doing since they hatched. And so, I actually had enough clips from them breeding to the laying the eggs to the eggs hatching that I put a little montage together. You guys know, been watching a while. I'm kind of a nerd. I like to put the montages together, some kind of crazy music or something usually, but uh, nothing different just a montage from breeding to hatch come back we'll talk about how we've been caring for them feeding them getting them going um and some other junk i'm just thinking about you talking about being a nerd note he still has the eggshells from two months ago yes yes i do and I got, i'm still trying to figure out what i'm gonna do with them but they're so cool though they're like a i mean they're i don't know if you can hear that but they're like I just think it's funny most people sandpaper. But what's wild that. about these eggs is these eggs went from uh, being solid like this, yeah, you know, it's weird. To they got rubbery and then the babies hatched and now they're solid again because they didn't dry it out. But uh, off to the montage. Well, I'm as happy as a boy could be. There ain't no gray skies over me guys I sure hope you enjoyed that montage it's really cool to catch that from them breeding all the way through laying the eggs to the babies we got right here so i've been at you know a lot like i said earlier on a lot of you guys that ask about the crevos so and um several questions from folks on how i've been taking care of them what our process has been so here we are what are we just a little over two months in i guess with the babies since they've hatched and Got everybody in their shoe boxes, as you saw. Uh, I moved the spiny tail iguana out to the reptile room, and 
it's just it, it gets too hot out there for one for these guys uh, i'm just thankful april lets me keep them in our bedroom you know most <laughs> people are like what but hey these snakes here i mean they're geez it's, it's a pile of money in these little guys yeah and not only that i just i can keep on top of them i get to see them every day and, and bam and it won't be too much longer i got several folks that are wanting these guys and uh i just want to make sure they're eating good that was one of the big things i was told in the beginning of this is that um they can be real picky to get to eating so now since we have them all successfully eating um the next big hurdle is going to be mice uh, i feel like they're eating fish really well now um april should have a few litters of mice coming any day and we're going to try some sitting some pinkies and see how that works out in the next feed but so what we've been doing is they're all in the shoe box here and there's usually a hide um the hides it was real simple it was something that i had laying around a little box of and, and they're just a, a cheap little these are actually made out of bamboo fiber remember because you were like is that, that going to be healthy yeah <laughs> i said well it's been a as long as they don't get wet if they get wet and you leave them what was it maybe about a week and a half i started noticing a little bit of mold spores and stuff on it but other than that they've been great and when i've cleaned their bins i'm you know i just pull it out chunk it uh but just cutting a little slit in it you know nothing special setting it in uh the water bowls now what's crazy and and i don't know if it's coincidence or not and i'll show you i'll find another one here in a second to show you but so with the water bowls the short ones have worked very well when it came to getting these guys to feed for me and there he's sitting in the corner here mm -hmm. but when it come to getting these guys to feed uh, 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 like fast I'm little him up. um there's a couple with some clear water bowls and it seems like when i put the clear water bowl against the edge of the house that's how i got them to start feeding if the water bowl is too tall it's yeah, they like, do good with those shallow ones too yeah it, 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 perfect with these little shallow ones so the only thing i've noticed and you know guys this is my first clutch uh with the crebos but what we noticed is that the shallower water bowl with a little, just enough water so the minnow could kind of get around. Uh, none of these have eaten the dead minnows because we tried that too. It was like yeah. offered a dead, uh, offered cut fish, but they have a, a few of them's eaten chicken so far. Uh, and then, like I said, this go around with them, the way they've been eating the fish, we're going to scent some pinkies and, and hopefully that'll get them fired off. I'm going to go through and I'll bore you with that I got to clean water bowls out so I'm gonna clean water bowls refill a few of them drop a couple of fish in and I'll come right back to you guys <laughs> all right that was a job I just cut it I don't want to bore you with all my rambling and then going through all these so but this is what I've had going on so I put uh, a good coconut bottom in there I've actually been misting the inside of here the other thing I did is covered one in we added a little fan for circulation with them being stacked on top of each other. This fan has been, uh, it's actually on just the lowest setting, but it circulates air pretty nice in here. Uh, with the one bulb, uh, I believe this is just like a, a 75 watt. Um, I put a little pan of water for the top pan because the tops of these things being gray, they do kind of attract some heat like black does. So I use this as a diffuser so it done two things. It keeps the top of this box from getting too hot and the snake below getting too hot. Um, and it also adds a little more humidity into the mix as well. So it's worked out really well. Um, the other good part, I don't have to worry about it if one gets out of the Tupperware, which has happened on two different occasions now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have to worry about the cats getting in there and eating one of them. Um, but it's worked out great. During the day, um, I run the light uh, and the fan at night. I usually cut the fan and the light off at night. Um, they're getting up to around 79 to 80. Uh, may, they may touch 81 in here during the day, but 80 is about max. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been working out pretty well, I think. I mean, even though I got 20 hungry mouths to, to attend to, and it's... Uh, the other thing I'm doing too, guys, um, 
you know, if this is something you end up trying with your own snakes, uh, usually every day, every other day at least, we're going in and alternating, kind of moving them around. Even though the air is flowing, the snake that's down here on this bottom today will be at the top, if you follow what I'm saying. So that's that's another thing, just to kind of help equalize that heat and stuff, if that makes any sense. I don't know, I'm OCD about that kind of stuff, so it probably doesn't make no difference at all. But to me, I've been kind of, what would it be like, uh, uh, shelf rotation? You know? No. <laughs> anyway, I got to get back to it. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, good to see y'all. Hope it's good to see me. Thanks for y'all dropping in. What? <laughs> hey, hey, I know I'm corny. Sorry. But thanks for dropping in. We're well. Try to uh, get some more crap out there for you guys. In the meantime, have a great rest of the week. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.